What's up friends, Dan Vega here back with another tutorial and today I get to talk about two products that I absolutely love and that's Vue.js and CodePen. So Vue 3 was recently released and there are a bunch of ways to get started with it. You can just drop a CDN on a page and start using it. You can use uh, the Vue CLI and create a full project. You can use a new project in the Vue ecosystem called Vite, which is a no bundler option. But another option that many don't know is out there is CodePen. And so in this tutorial, I'm gonna to talk to you about what CodePen is, how to get started writing Vue 3 in CodePen. So let's jump on it. So here we are in the Vue documentation. If you look up top, by default, you're going to be using the Vue 2 documentation until everything kind of rolls out. Now Vue 3 is production ready, but a lot of the supporting libraries are not. And so if you go to the documentation right now, you may see this. If you come to this in the future, Vue 3 may be um, the main documentation site. So I'm gonna click here and go over here. And this is a really good place if you wanna go to the docs and you wanna go to the guide and you wanna get an introduction to what is Vue um, and specifically what's new in Vue 3, uh, you can check that out here. But I'm gonna head over to CodePen, and this is, um, I'm logged in as me, so you can create a free account. And if you're not familiar with CodePen, CodePen allows you to go in and create a new pen, and it allows you to create a project using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, where you can bring in many libraries. So if you have like CSS libraries, like uh, Bootstrap or Tailwind, if you have JavaScript libraries, you can bring those in as well. And it's a really great way uh, for a no friction, get up and running really quickly uh, solution. And what I really love about it is like you don't have to walk somebody through like how to set up an editor, you know, here's how you install Visual Studio Code, here are the plugins that you're gonna need. And then it's like, you know, if you're kind of new, how do you share this project out to others? CodePen allows you to do all of those things right here in the browser, which is really great. So that's CodePen, if you're not familiar with it. What you may not know though, is there is a way to create Vue single file components and share those in a CodePen. Now you won't see it on here though, when you go into like a new pen or anything like that. Um, I don't know of a way to get to it from the menu, but I do know that you can come in here and create your own by going to editor and Vue. So I'm in CodePen pen, editor, view. I'll go ahead and drop that link below. Uh, so if you want to, um, you can come in here and create your own pen and it will basically drop you into an example view project. Now, by default, this is still view two. So if you come up here and, whoops, hit the wrong button there. If you come up here and hit this, you can see that there is the pen settings. And so what we wanna do is go ahead and change this to view three. So if we save and close, that'll put us into a view three app. So what I'm gonna do is actually get rid of all of this and we're just gonna start fresh. We're gonna name our pen. We'll say, hello, view three. And I'll come in here and we can start typing out view three. The first thing I'm gonna do is gonna add in a little boilerplate. Again, this is kind of one of the advantages of an IDE or a code editor like Visual Studio Code is when you create a new .view file, you get kind of some scaffolding there for you. Um, I'm gonna show you what a basic template looks like uh, or a single file component looks like. So you'll have a um, template, a script, and a style. And so a view single file component is all the things that you need to create a component. It has your markup, which goes in the template. It has any JavaScript or any view code will go inside of the script block and anything to go ahead and style the component goes in the style tags. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here in the template tag and we're going to create a button. And we're gonna do something with that button in a second. Again, if you've kind of followed this channel, you've seen this example before, we're just using a simple counter, but it, again, it's just a great example of, to get up and running. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that count is, and then we're gonna have something there, and then we're gonna say double is, and we're gonna have something there. So 
this is going to allow us to display what the count is and what the double of that count is. So if the count was two, uh, the double would be four, right? So we're going to make this a little more interactive in a second. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come into our script block. And what, what you get by default when you create a single file component in, say, Visual Studio Code is you will get this export default. And then inside of there, uh, you can do whatever you need to do in your um, script. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of Vue3's new composition API. And the way we can do that is we can say setup. And inside of the setup function, this is where kind of all of the um, logic for our component is going to go. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import a couple of things that we're going to use. So again, this is another advantage of using in like something like Visual Studio Code. Um, you get this kind of assistance, um, code assistance. So when I'm typing like reactive, it would import it automatically for me. But I'm going to go ahead and import a couple of things. So I'm going to say import reactive and computed from view. And now I can use those down here in my setup function. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up a variable called state. And it is going to use the reactive function. And this is going to go ahead and set up some reactive data properties for us. So if you want to learn more about reactive and ref, um, there are two of the new functions in view three that allow you to create reactive data. Uh, I'll go ahead and link to an article I wrote below. Uh, I think I have a video on the same thing. So if I do, uh, I would go ahead and link to that. So we have our reactive um, function, which takes an object. And we're going to set some default values here. We're going to say count is 0. And double is actually going to be a computed function. So that's why we imported computed from here. Um, I'm sorry, computed property. And that's why we imported the um, computed from above. And this is going to take the state.count, so whatever that variable is right here, and it's just going to go ahead and multiply it by 2. So that is our state. So we also want a function in here called increment. And what we're going to do is we're just going to increase the count by 1. Finally, anything that we want to use in our template, we need to go ahead and return from the setup function. So I'm going to go ahead and say return state and increment. So now that those are there, I can use those here in my template. So right away, I'm just going to say instead of two, I'm going to say state.count. And over here, I'm going to say state.double. So if this um, looks a little different to you than ha because we're returning that object of state to say state.count, state.double, um, go ahead and read that article that I'm going to list below because it will kind of walk through um, what reactive and ref do when we go ahead and return those to the template. So now we can say, um, so we see that our count is zero and our double is zero. So that's good. So far, our logic is working. So we need to add one more thing. When we click the button, we want to go ahead and call this increment function that we created. And because we returned it, we are able to uh, use that here in our template. So I'm going to go ahead and say at click is equal to increment. And that will say, hey, when you go ahead and click this, I want to click event handler. I want you to go ahead and call the increment function. So if this works, we should be able to come in here. And every time we click it, we are increasing the count. And then the computed property takes that count and just doubles it. So, so far, so good. Um, let's go ahead and add a little style to this. So I'm just going to add a body style. Let's say min height 100 VH. I'm going to add a little green here. And what I want to do is actually display a flex here. So I can align items, center, and justify content, center. So I'm basically placing this in the middle of the screen on both axes. And finally, let's just bump the 
font size for this up to 24 pixels just so it's a little larger. All right, so here we go. When we go ahead and click it, everything works the same. So nothing crazy, right? We didn't do anything crazy here. Again, if you've been following this channel, you've probably seen this example a lot. I probably need to like come up with some cooler examples, but the point of the example wasn't really view three. Um, it was being able to get up and running with view three very quickly. And I think CodePen is really great for this because what I can do is go ahead and save this pen now and go ahead and share it out with others. So this is really cool, being able to write single file components right here in CodePen. Now, when you move away from just kind of testing some features out and writing a, a, a single component, when you wanna like start composing components of other components and you need to, you know, then you're gonna need to move to something, um, to an actual project, whether it be dropping a CDN in, um, using the Vue CLI or using uh, a new project in the Vue ecosystem called the Vite. So I will link all to that stuff below, the documentation, and then be on the lookout. Uh, this was just kind of an introduction to a quick way to get up and running with Vue 3, um, but I'm putting together a video of all the different ways that you can get started with Vue 3. So I'd really love to hear from you. If you have questions about Vue 3, I I'm putting a bunch of content together on that. I'd really like to hear. So. Go ahead, leave me a comment below. What's your favorite feature in Vue 3? Or what would you like uh, to see some more content around? What are things that you're having trouble grasping? Um, so I'll try to get into that. So as always, if you enjoyed this video and you found some value in it, please go ahead and leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. It really helps support me. And as always, friends, happy coding.